Welcome everybody, Josh here, back at again with brand new YouTube video. So if you've seen an image of the TV show Star Wars The Mandalorian, that is going to be what we're going to be discussing here today. So Star Wars The Mandalorian is a TV show that is directed by Jon Favreau as well as Dave Filoni. It also is directed by Bryce Dallas Howard as well as Deborah Chow as well as Taika Waititi. This has a bunch of different directors and they've all come on to kind of give their own take on the Star Wars lore. And this is one of those TV shows that I think that I absolutely love. I watch it every single morning before I wake up and I have my coffee and it pretty much gets me in the mood to kind of start my day. And I think that's something that you kind of need with a TV show like this. This is after sort of the whole sequel trilogy era of the Disney Star Wars slash Lucasfilm era. And I think that everybody, including myself, is kind of looking for something that was a little bit more Star Wars-y. And I think this really took the cake in terms of giving us something that honored the past while giving us something new. It took the Star Wars franchise into a new future. And I think that with Star Wars The Mandalorian, a lot of us were rather skeptical. A lot of us didn't know in terms of Disney taking over the franchise. And I think with what we've seen so far in terms of The Last Jedi and The Rise of Skywalker, some of us were a little bit worried when they announced that The Mandalorian actually was coming out and that it was going to actually be a couple different seasons long and then we're going to get different seasons over time but I think Jon Favreau is one of those people that is actually a Star Wars fan. He kind of grew up with the Star Wars legacy. He kind of respects George Lucas in much the same way that I myself had kind of inspired by him to kind of make movies and stuff like that as well as tell my own stories and I think without George Lucas I would probably not be here or even Steven Spielberg for that matter because those are two of my favorite directors and they just so happen to be friends in real life so it's kind of cool to see Jon Favreau kind of recognize the legacy that George Lucas kind of had in sort of the movies that inspired him and he kind of went back to the well and in terms of looking at sort of the things that inspired George Lucas to kind of bring to us this TV series. And that's what we got with Star Wars The Mandalorian. Now, this is a very simple plot. It is very easy to follow. It's about getting to point A to point B. And it's about the Mandalorian, his kind of upbringing and stuff like that. And the fact that he was there during the whole Jedi Purge. And that he's kind of rescued by a Mandalorian and then kind of taken into the ranks. He's similar to that of the bounty hunter Boba Fett. But he is kind of ushered into the ranks because he is a part of that family. And he kind of lives by the Mandalorian code. He has a similar weapons and armor and stuff like that to the Mandalorians. Which I think the armor the show is really cool. It's cool that they actually use practical effects and did do CGI, which George Lucas was really prominent of using in terms of the prequel trilogy. The clone troopers and stuff like that were all CGI, which definitely looked a little bit fake. I like the fact that it actually uses practical effects and practical locations, practical costumes as well. It goes back to using practical visual effects to kind of make this a little bit more believable. And it actually feels lived in because this is taking place after the Great Jedi Purge or Order 66, as is known in the Star Wars universe. You get to learn a bit about the backstory between Baby Yoda, who's basically this child or asset, as it's called in the TV show. The Mandalorian pretty much stumbles upon him while he's doing the job and he has to make a choice whether to kill IG-11 which is basically IG-88 from the original trilogy and whether or not he's going to actually take him and get him to where he needs to go so that way he can have a better life. So the Mandalorian pretty much gets the idea to take out IG-11. He actually doesn't kill him which everybody thinks happens in the first couple of episodes but later on he kind of reprograms the droid and the droid becomes sort of a nurse droid and is taking care of Baby Yoda as well as the Mandalorian. And I'm a sucker for movies and TV shows that are basically about fathers and sons and that's pretty much what the Star Wars universe has been for a long time and about like fathers and sons and kind of how they kind of deal with sort of what's going on in sort of these people's lives and wanting the best for their fathers and sons trying to build a better future and I think that George Lucas really had a thing for the hero's journey and Joseph Campbell and the hero of a thousand faces as well as the power of myth which is a book that I've actually read I've read a lot of the Joseph Campbell hero's journey type books and I really do appreciate sort of the mythological scope that is Star Wars and kind of what it means to me as someone that's interested in filmmaking and I think that John Favreau who created basically the MCU universe with the first Iron Man movie he took that into account when he was creating the show he's like we didn't really do that well with the sequel trilogy of Star Wars films we kind of pissed off a lot of people and kind of split the fandom in sort of the way that Ryan Johnson put it and whether or not you like the Star Wars sequel trilogy that's all up to you but I really don't appreciate sort of the Last Jedi and the Rise of Skywalker the Rise of Skywalker is an okay movie it's nothing special it's nothing fantastic either but I really did like The Force Awakens and Rogue One those are the two Disney sequel trilogy era Star Wars films that I actually grew to like over time I do sort of like Solo a little bit but not as much as I like the first two movies that I mentioned in the sequel trilogy era. I'm more of an original trilogy and prequel trilogy fan myself, but if you do like these sequel trilogy films, then you're allowed to do that. Don't let me disavow sort of the sequel trilogy for you if you happen to like those movies. If you like those, then you know, like what you like and like what you don't like. It's pretty much subjective in terms of art, but for me as a Star Wars fan, as someone that's grown up with this franchise, I really appreciate what George Lucas had created before. I respect sort of the lore that came before it, as well as the expanded universe, which Kathleen Kennedy just threw out. But you know, that's besides the point. This is not a video for that. This is about the Mandalorian and kind of what it means. And I think as a TV franchise, I think that this has a lot of legs. One of the things I really like about this is the score and that's done by Ludwig Lorenzen, I think is his name or something like that. And he actually does a really good job of this TV show. And I think he tries to make it seem a little bit like the John Williams score, even though it's not necessarily the score that he used in the original trilogy. There's hardly any of that actually in the Mandalorian itself. And we don't really need that, especially with the TV series. You know, at first it was kind of hard to like listen to that music and like it. But as time goes on, as you kind of get used to listening to 
to that music and watching the TV series over and over and over again, I think I appreciated the music even more and I actually grew to actually like it, which at first I didn't really like it too much. I'm like, you know, this isn't really Star Wars. This isn't really what we're used to before. So it takes a little bit of getting used to, but I actually liked it in the end. And I like sort of the direction that they take with some of the story elements. I like the fact that some of these references come into play in terms of the original trilogy when they originally go to Tatooine and they're kind of looking through sort of the binoculars and then that thing attacks the Mandalorian as well as the guy that he's kind of working with. It kind of reminds me of that scene with Luke Skywalker where he's kind of looking sort of into the binoculars in the first couple movies and he kind of spots that group of hunters and stuff like that and they eventually attack him as well. There's a lot of callbacks and references to the original Star Wars franchise and I think that if you're looking for it, you're going to find it. If you're a fan of the franchise and you've seen those movies over and over again, you're going to find that stuff within it. They actually use some vehicles and stuff like that from the original trilogy such as the speeder bikes as well as the ATSTs in this TV series and they actually update them and give them a little bit more of a different sort of look to it which I kind of like. I like the fact that they're kind of trying to make this look a little bit new as well as feel lived in and you know this takes place after sort of the Empire's rule over the galaxy so everything's dirty, everything's grungy, everything feels lived in and I think that's one of the things that I really like about this is that it feels kind of practical in a way because you know practical sets and practical filmmaking is something that I'm really interested in like far too often these days people use CGI as a crutch and I think that it's just kind of sad that we kind of have gotten to that point because it's kind of hard not to screw up CGI. It's kind of hard to kind of screw up a green screen. I'm actually using a green screen set right now in a blue screen. So it's relatively easy for someone to kind of do that stuff nowadays. So it doesn't really excite people as much as it used to. But the practical filmmaking, the sort of low budget film aspect to this is something I really appreciate. And they actually took the time and effort to get the 501st, which is a cosplay division that kind of tours sort of different Star Wars conventions, Star Wars events and stuff like that. And they actually brought them in to kind of play stormtroopers in some of the episodes, especially the episodes with Moth Gideon, who actually has the dark saber, which comes into play from Rebels and the Clone Wars. And I really do appreciate that because I feel like once you see sort of these people who are not normally actors in these costumes that look pretty damn well, especially to the point where it's like almost movie accurate because these guys take time and effort out of their day to kind of make these realistic looking 501st costumes. It was just kind of cool to see them take like everyday people off the street and kind of put them into the role of a stormtrooper because that was pretty much what Star Wars was originally. It was like low budget stuff, but it actually was a high concept sort of idea that kind of became this giant sweeping thing that spanned decades upon decades. And I think that's what Star Wars, the Mandalorian and Star Wars itself in terms of the modern era kind of needs. It needs to be something that inspires people and changes people's ideas as well as do something new for the newer generation, but kind of respect the older generation that came before it, such as myself. I grew up with the OT. I kind of watched the VHSs constantly, like I've said countless times before as a kid. And I saw all the prequel trilogy films in theaters and that was awesome. Revenge of the Sith is one of my favorite Star Wars films because of that reason. And I just think it's a really well-crafted film. And then I saw all the sequel trilogy films in theaters as well. And while I wasn't happy with the direction that they went with it, I really do appreciate John Favreau and Dave Filoni for taking the time and the care and the effort to kind of give us something that the fans kind of have wanted for a while now. And I really do appreciate sort of all the other newcomers and the different directors and stuff like that who have come into play in terms of The Mandalorian. So I really do think that there's a really well-crafted Star Wars series and I really am excited to kind of see where they go in the direction in terms of season two because season two is almost here and it's coming out in October. One of the things I really do like that they kind of mentioned in the making of behind the scenes gallery for Star Wars The Mandalorian is the fact that they have this gigantic video wall and it's basically something that you can project sort of a background to sort of like a 3D animated background or even sort of one that they filmed on location and kind of projected against the screen. So they're not really using green or blue screen like I have in the background of my shot here or even sort of in the prequel trilogy which George Lucas used a lot of green and blue screen at the time because it's really revolutionary and George Lucas I think was really keen on making improvements in terms of filmmaking and doing unique and different stuff and this show definitely has something unique with that sort of video wall and the ability to kind of make these really high quality low budget shots that look amazing once you actually finally see the finished product. Just the one-liners, the quotes that are in sort of Star Wars The Mandalorian, the references to the older films and the franchise, the fact that they took the time and the care and the effort to kind of do practical sets while also doing miniatures with the Razor Crest. You know, the Razor Crest they actually built a scale model that they could use in film similar to that with the motion control technology that they used in the original trilogy. And you know, I think that was really cool that they kind of went back to the older technology, the older methods to kind of make Star Wars The Mandalorian. And I think that makes a pretty badass show. And I really do think that Star Wars The Mandalorian is sort of an A plus show. Like I've grown to kind of become obsessed with the show and watch it every single day. They could have went the political route. They could have went the route that they've been going through like the past couple of years with the Star Wars franchise, but they chose not to. They chose to honor the fans, respect the fans. And I think if they do that in the future with season two, the Obi-Wan Kenobi series, which I think is a no brainer. I think everybody wants to see Ewan McGregor back in sort of the Star Wars mythos and see him kind of work again as Obi-Wan Kenobi. I think they're going to have a hit, you know, series. And even Gina Carano does an awesome job as sort of the shock trooper that was kind of there during the Great Jedi Purge. She's pretty badass. She kind of fights the Mandalorian and stuff like that at one point in time within this series. And some of the fight choreography in this show is badass. You get that opening shot where Mandalorian is kind of taking people out in the bar and you see 
the iris door kind of slowly crash against sort of that dude and kind of cut him in half and stuff and it's just a really violent show so i think that if you're a star wars fan like myself who's been around for ages you're gonna really find something new to like about this show i think that if you're a new star wars fan you're gonna also really like the show because there's a lot of stuff in it that you're gonna like from sort of the past movies if you're really into the sequel trilogy but i'm personally not i kind of like the original george lucas era of star wars so that's my own personal take on star wars the mandalorian i really do like this show i watch it a lot especially in the mornings when i'm having my coffee and trying to get ready in the morning like i said before i think that you know the visual effects of this series is awesome the fact that they use practical effects like i said before the score of this is awesome with their new composer that they got and he does a really good job so i think as a star wars fan they really took time and effort to kind of look back into what made star wars great they hired people that were actual star wars fans and then they made a really kick-ass show to boot with it so that is my opinion of star wars the mandalorian i like i said before i think it earns that a rating and it's definitely an a plus type of show so i would highly recommend that if you're interested in filmmaking if you're interested in new technologies and stuff like that you should definitely check this show out and that is my opinion hopefully you guys learned a thing or two about the filmmaking industry and as always guys if you want to see more content like this down below please rate comment subscribe and i'll see you guys in the next video peace out